All right, we're going to talk about witchcraft. And there are five different subcategories to this study. The first one is the definition. The second one is the linguistic origins and definitions according to your King James Bible. Um, the word Wicca and its origins according to the craft's own sources and former witches, I might add, because I've studied that, because the Lord has shown me a lot of interesting information about witchcraft and Wicca as a whole. And lastly, we're going to look at a few definitions from 1828 Dictionary. Okay. And uh, the third part of the study is going to be on uh, the history, the historical facts of witchcraft or Wicca or any of the other variation names of this study. The fourth thing we're going to look at is we're going to uh, we're going we're going to see we're going to see a diagram of Wicca and its various tentacles within the world and what society deems as normal. And uh, you're going to see how this all fits together. And um, it's very, very interesting. And the last subtopic we're going to talk about, or I should say I'm going to, I'm going to present, is questions for currently practicing witches from a Cowan and uh, your own term for a non-witch because my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saved me from my sins and therefore I am not a witch. But the Lord has shown me a lot on this topic. And I'm going to show you, lastly, after a few questions for you, I'm going to tell you how to get out of the system permanently. I'm going to give you and show you your ticket out of the system if you want out. If you truly want out, I will show you that. So, <clears throat> if you're already objecting at this point to the study, let me remind you of a couple of things. You're either one, a witch yourself, practicing witch or warlock, you know, because that's a, the male term for a witch, um, their own source, mind you. Or two, you're socially engineered and or under a spell from a witch, and the witch or witches all around the world are currently laughing at you, saying, <laughs> we got them, they're under our mind control. So you're one of those two things if you're objecting to this. But hear me out, because like the King James Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13, it says, He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Okay? So, just hear me out. So, our first part of the study is a definition that is very, very telling from one of the most renowned scholars of this movement, also known as a the religion of witchcraft. Let's check this out. Margaret Adler says, she says that there, that there are Indo-European roots to the word WIC, W-I-C. First Ainsley, right here, the root word, okay? Or another variation is Okay? This is her own words, mind you. The Lord has shown me some of her famous quotes. And either of these, both of these mean to bend or to turn. Very telling. She goes on to say,
You see that? Let's look at a few buzzwords here, shall we? A witch, right here, her very own words, Marg Adler, would be a woman or a man. Another term for a male witch is a warlock, according to their own sources. Skilled in the art. It's also a legalized religion, according to this world's current government system, which is uh, very telling. The art of shaping, bending, and changing reality. For Stanzi, shaping, bending, and changing reality. Let me just give you a few little uh, pointers of how that happens based on personal experience when I was a lost woman before the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. You have drugs, you have malnourishment or malnutrition, you have sleep deprivation, which is a, a very, very interesting factor. It's used all across the world in, di in different forms. And you also have uh, emotional, mental, and physical slash psychological abuse. Okay? These are all different types of factors that go into which is shaping, bending, and changing reality. And uh, as the Lord has been showing me some very interesting things about my past lost life before he saved me, uh, I'm seeing some very interesting things line up with this subject. And uh, future studies will show you just what I mean. Um, <clears throat> but let me remind you of the fact that before this video has come out, uh, we have already done a study on the basic mind control formula, and just the very basis of this definition from Mark Adler's own words, it defines the mind control formula. Witchcraft is mind control. Mind control is witchcraft. You cannot separate the two. So again, if you're saying, but I'm not a witch and I don't believe you, well, then you're under mind control and you're under a spell by a currently practicing witch. That's the way it is. But as we continue, part two of this study will go into the linguistic origins. Very intriguing. You remember the root word of wick, right? Well, what we're, what we're going to do is simply add the suffix a-n. Wicked. Another term for w-i-c-c-a. And this word means to bend. Just like Margaret Adler said. And from here we have the different root words of Wicca, another variation of W-I-C-C-A, which leads to which. This also leads to Interesting, a legalized religion as of today. Hmm, how about that? You have another root word from here. Means Bad or wicked? Interesting.
See how they all relate? Bending, shaping, changing reality. You know, initially the whole, the word meant bad, wicked, wizard, or wicked one. But supposedly today, uh, witches are labeled as good and white. Hmm, how about that? Now let's see what, uh, Let's see what um, your King James Bible, right here. Let's see what that and the 1828 dictionary say about this. And, um, but before we do that, let's look at a few different translations in various languages of the word witch or wicca. translation of the same thing in different names and they all Now, if you recognize any of these different words, I'm probably off in which one goes with each of these over here. But the point is, is these are all different words around the world for the same concept that we're talking about here. And these are all the definitions that these words represent. You know, <clears throat> one who curses, troubler, oh boy, frightener, and one who hurls curses. Hmm. How about that? Now on to some vocabulary terms. Cannibalism. Or just cannibal. Means flesh eater. And since you're eating flesh, it also includes blood eating because the flesh and the blood are, are the life, represent life, so to speak. And uh, you have charmer. Hmm. Well, it includes to give you the official definition from from Webster's 1828 Dictionary, I think this is a rather intriguing definition for it because it covers a lot of different things. Hmm. <clears throat> you have different sorts of definitions for the same word. <clears throat> Words, characters, or other, thing, other things imagined to possess some occult. Mm-hmm. 1828 Dictionary says some occult. Or unintelligible power, hence a magic power or spell by which with the supposed assistance of the devil, witches and sorcerers have been supposed to do wonderful things. Spell enchantment. And uh, <clears throat> hence that which has power to subdue opposition and gain the affections, 
that which can please irresistibly, that which delights and attracts the heart, generally in the plural. Oh boy, talk about a very, very uh, broad type of definition. It applies to a whole lot of things nowadays. Diviner or divination. How about that? It basically means one who pretends to predict events or reveal occult things. Again, occult means hidden. So enchanter is another name for sorcerer, magician, where the person subdues via charms and spells. Again, another tentacle of witchcraft, as you'll see later. Extrasensory perception, otherwise known as ESP. Um, it's not in the 1828 dictionary as an actual definition, and there's nowhere in your King James Bible that spells out any point in time where a man de determines or reads another man's thoughts in any way, shape, shape and form. ESP is a mark of uh, is basically mark, mark of devil possession for lost sinners. And uh, <clears throat> fatalism. Well, the root here is fate, but basically it means uh, all things are subject to inevitable necessity, according to the 1828 dictionary. Uh, <clears throat> You can look these up for yourself to see the full length definition here. Necromancy. Interesting. It means communication with the dead. Enchantment. Another way of saying enchantment. How about occult mediumship? It means uh, divination, esotericism, psychic. You know, because basically you're using a seducing spirit or a devil of some sort or a spirit of fear or whatever the case may be to get your agenda through as a witch or warlock or whatever your cult title is. So that's the, that's the basic of occult mediumship. Divination, uh, esotericism, psychic. Now, sorcery. It means uh, magic, enchantment, Again, we already got it here. Enchanter, another name for witchcraft, or witch, depending on the how it's spelled. Sorcerer, another name for witch, and divination. And uh, <clears throat> witch, another name for sorcery or enchantment. And of course, all the other definitions you saw earlier to define the word witch. <clears throat> and last, wizard, according to the 1828 dictionary. Enchanter, sorcerer, charmer. And so all these different terms relate to basically the same thing. And I, I already looked up the definitions to all these different words. I'm just telling you the basic buzzwords. You can look up the entire definition if you want to on your own. So 
<clears throat> these are the basic, what I've told you is the basic definition and keywords for each of these different concepts, each of these different vocabulary terms. Now we go to what the Bible defines, the King James Bible. And uh, <clears throat> astrology. Let's see where it's defined and condemned. So let's turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 47. Verses 13 and 14. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Hmm, interesting definition, don't you think? And Daniel chapter 2 verse 10, that's, uh, I just read to you the, the condemnation of astrology, um, <clears throat> but Daniel actually defines it even better. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler, that asked such things at any, ma at any magician, or astrologer, or Chaldean. So, interesting how astrology ties back to the Chaldeans and magicians. Because what are they trying to do? Predict future events through stargazing and zodiacs, as it's called nowadays, or horoscope, if you're familiar with that, which I'm almost positive you are. Next, we have abortion. And abortion is actually defined in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. I hope you're following along so you can read this for yourself. It's very, very intriguing. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now I realize this is talking about the prophet Jeremiah back in the Old Testament, but the key words here are, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, get that? That means God knows everything every single person he creates. There's no such thing as, well, uh, I think pro-choice would be okay in certain situations and circumstances to include, you know, da 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 you know, or, well, there might be, uh, you know, this and that. No, there's no exception. Abortion, right here, abortion, as the modern day term is called, is murder. There's no getting around it. This includes birth control pills, which unfortunately I was ignorant of as a lost woman. So I understand, you know, what happens with those pills. Um, <clears throat> now let's see what Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 through 12 says about the sin of abortion. 
Okay? What does God think about this sin? Chapter 18 in Deuteronomy, verses 9 through 12. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch or a charmer, or a consulter with, with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. See what God thinks about this? Mm-hmm. Very serious. Okay, chanting. Now there's different forms of chanting. You got the Amlet chant of that's chanting by a different form. And you got chanting that the Vatican Jeslik priests and all his, his uh, servants do at various times. But the Bible actually talks about this in Matthew chapter 6 verse 7. It's described and condemned here. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, a type of chanting, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Okay? How about christening? Now, this is not a Bible word, but it means, in, in Catholic terms, infant baptism. And uh, <clears throat> it's described in Acts chapter 22, verse 16. Acts 22, verse 16. And it now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. See, the Catholic cult, the whore on seven hills, otherwise known as Mystery Babylon Vatican, made this term christening for infants to describe their uh, baptism to wash away their sin. But ironically, infants don't know what sin is because they're, they're under the age of accountability. You know, kind of hard to baptize someone who doesn't know what sin is yet. So uh, that verse right there describes infant baptism or christening. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 and Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 condemn this. Let's see what they say. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. This is talking about real salvation through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you come to him as a repentant, contrite, broken sinner and say, I'm a sinner. I deserve hell. Please save me. I can't save myself. That's what that verse means. It's only through Jesus Christ that there is redemption through his blood. Nobody else. And, and not through baptism either. Baptism has nothing to do with the remission of, of your sins. In fact, baptism, if you think that baptism is going to save you from an eternity in hell and your sins, uh, you're going to end up in the lake of fire for all eternity because you are seriously, seriously uh, mistold, misinformed. So... Baptism has nothing to do with the remission of sins. Um, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. 
This is the second one that condemns christening, otherwise known as infant baptism. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Again, baptism, christening, Catholic christening, will not save you from your sins. For Stanzi, I hope so. How about esoteric, like esoteric arts? Where is this talked about in your King James Bible? Well, let's go to Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19. <clears throat> I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. And just to let you know, if you think uh, your secret sins will not be found out, I have a verse for you. Uh, the next one is John chapter 18, verse 20, where it also defines esotericism. John chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Okay? Very, very wise words. Esotericism involves secrets. You present one image Oh, we're just a good community service based friendly group of people that just like to have fun. And on the inside, inside their temples or chapters or covens, whatever the case may be that they give to the cow and laity. And uh, yes, I know your language. So if you're practicing which I understand your your terminology. I thank the Lord for showing me your your own sources and um, so basically esotericism is uh, involves secrets you know your pageant to the public and your actual secretive sins that you don't want the world to know about that's the basis of esotericism how about uh, <clears throat> the condemnation of this well Romans chapter 2 verse 16 is a very, very fitting verse to esotericism. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, every single secret sin you as a practicing witch have or are doing or have done at any point in time, God, the Lord Jesus Christ will show the world what you're about in his time. Your secrets will be shown. So uh, you can throw your pretty party somewhere else, but uh, God knows your heart. God knows exactly what you're doing right now. And he knows every single thought that is going through your head right now, including every single objection to the study. So let's continue. Evolution. Where is evolution described in your King James Bible? For all of my saved uh saved christian sisters out there <laughs> i got terminology on my brain right now <laughs> almost said uh, got my words mixed up evolution we're going to second peter chapter three Okay, 
2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. These verses define and condemn the concept of evolution. <clears throat> Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, all of you who object to the study are described there as scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment, and perdition of ungodly men. So you see, it's defined and condemned there. And uh, <clears throat> I hope for your sake, whether you're lost or saved, you'll pay attention to this, because this will show you the signs and symptoms, the characteristics um, of witchcraft and its tentacles, and how to spot it. And reach out to those who are victims of this serious, serious, uh, sinful system. Uh, <clears throat> we already mentioned ESP, so feminism. There's no talking of, there's no mention of, the, of ESP in the Bible regarding man reading another man's thoughts. So, um... As I said before, it's a sign of devil possession. Uh, feminism, right here. A very, very big interesting topic today. And it's described and condemned in two different places, both in the book of Proverbs. So let's turn to the book of Proverbs, and we're going to look at chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7, verses 10 through 12. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Hmm. Very interesting traits of feminism and feminists. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish, the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Every single feminist in history plucks down her house with her own hands by saying, Ugh, men, you can't live with them, can't live without them. Ugh, my husband doesn't make enough money. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, feminism. Right there. Both verses describe and condemn it. Are you one of them? I hope not. The next one is fornication. It's described and condemned in 1 Corinthians. So let's go to... 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians capital 6, verses 16 through 18. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. In more ways than one. Every time you fornicate, um, whether it be uh, opposite genders or same genders, otherwise known as sodomy, 
you're creating soul ties, which is very dangerous because when you create a soul tie, an ungodly soul tie, you are taking upon yourself all the sins that every single person you have fornicated with, they're being heaped upon yourself. And it's a very, very big burden as a lost sinner. <clears throat> and so that right there both defines it and condemns it. And that is why it's a very serious thing. Um, I just want to make a note of ESP, extrasensory perception, that uh, even though the King James Bible does not mention it, Jesus Christ is and was the only man who could read the thoughts, not just could, does read the thoughts of every single person. You know, he knows everything you're going to think before you think it. He knows what you're going to say before you say it. He knows exactly what you're going to do before you do it. Okay? But... <clears throat> The reason why he can do that and why he does do that is because he is God manifest in the flesh. And so Satan, Satan loves to corrupt the King James Bible, the only perfect word of God in existence. And Satan does whatever he can to copy the Lord Jesus Christ in everything he does and everything he says with a little tiny bit of subtlety and deceit, you know, in order to steer you off in the wrong direction. And Satan says, I'm going to call that ESP, and I'm going to use my version of ESP. And so that's what he does through Satanism, witchcraft, various things like that. But uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself because uh, you'll be interested in a very, very intriguing doc diagram and other supplemental drawings coming up in the study. So... Um, but for now, just remember that ESP is not biblical, but <clears throat> ESP is Satan's way of copying God. Because Satan says, I will be like the Most High. I will, you know, he always has to say, I, I. That's Satan. You know, because of his pride, he got lifted up. And, um, and so God made him the, uh, the king over all the children of pride, because he is very, very prideful. But he appears very, very self-righteous, as every single person who says, I'm a good person, don't judge me. <clears throat> Anyhow, heathen or pagan. The Bible word for, for uh, pagan is heathen. And it's described in Acts chapter 17, verse 22. Acts chapter 17, verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are, ye are too superstitious. Hmm. Basically, who is, he's describing pagans, heathens, whatever you want to call them, because those are people who are superstitious. So it's very, very clear what this word is in that verse. And uh, where does the Bible condemn this? Well, let's turn to Galatians. Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. See, the heathen were not circumcised. The Jews had to be circumcised according to Old Testament law. And so that's what it's describing there. And so um, <clears throat> the next word is Hinduism. Hinduism is, is obviously not a biblical word, but it's a man-made religion 
that is under the control and also a, a tentacle of the Whore on Seven Hills, the Vatican, or the Roman Catholic Church, as it's also called. And Hinduism is condemned in the King James Bible. And you say, where? Well, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And Hinduism, of all things, worships other idols or gods, lowercase g on gods. Every man-made false religion, cult, uh, heresy, Roman Catholic daughter, in other words, worships the lowercase g of God. And idols too. They just name them different things. And um, <clears throat> so that's the condemnation of that one. And you'll see Hinduism is a very, very big aspect of witchcraft later on. But I'm not going to give that away. You'll see it in a bit. Illumination. Oh boy, here we go. Big time word here. Illumination. Hmm. Where is this talked about? Well, very, very good description of Satan in the Bible is the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. <clears throat> How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I, I only wrote verse 12 in my notes, but this is, this is a very good description of Satan otherwise known as Lucifer. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into, into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. See what I mean? Satan is, is very, very prideful. He wants to be like God. He tried to overthrow God, which is why it says right here, He's brought down to the sides of the pit of hell, the pit of hell. And 2 Corinthians chapter 11 also defines and condemns illumination. Let's see what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. <clears throat> For such are false apostles deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Illumination, angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his, if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Illumination, by another name. And uh, every single person who claims to be illuminated or see a vision every man-made religion or cult or whatever you call it gets his vision from Satan a false light and as we saw is transformed into an angel of light and uh, <clears throat> but if you want real illumination so to speak in modern terms if you want real wisdom let's see what God says about it how do you get real wisdom and knowledge and understanding Go to the book of James, James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Satan, when he gives wisdom or understanding, he always mixes in deceit and lies with it. 
And if you leave his system, he'll try to do whatever he can to destroy you, so he ends up upbraiding the wisdom that he supposedly gives you. With God, God will give you the wisdom you desire and his timing, and he won't do a thing to upbraid with it. He'll give you as much as you want. All you have to do is, is ask him. The next one is karma. Where is this described in the Bible? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 describes and condemns, excuse me, karma, also known as good works and reincarnation. Sound familiar to all you Catholics of various denominations out there? Good works to get to heaven? Hmm, how about that? Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, And as it is appointed, and as it, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hmm. Sorry for all you reincarnationists out there. You ain't gonna live another life after you die. You're either gonna go to hell if you don't repent of your sin and come to God as the, the wicked sinner that you are, or if you come to God as a repentant, contrite, broken sinner for salvation and, uh, and, ask, him, and ask God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to save you, he will, and you'll end up going to heaven. So karma is obviously condemned in the Bible, the King James Bible. All the other Catholic perversions out there don't condemn it because they'd be condemning their own system if they did. How about uh, the next one? This is a pretty big series of words here. 